Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be going over my top 5 easy effects to add to your Valorant montages or gaming montages in general using Adobe Premiere Pro. I did make an After Effects version of this which you can see on screen right now. There's a link in the top right corner or in the description if you want to check that video out. This is basically going to be the exact same as the other video, just this time using Premiere Pro as I had a lot of requests for it. And just before we get started, I'd like to say I've made several other tutorials all revolving around Valorant or just gaming montages in general which you can check out on my channel channel in the playlist in the description below as well as the card on the end of this video. If you do find this video entertaining or useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We're almost at 2,000 subs so let's make that happen as well as follow me on my other socials at RocklandVL on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok and without any further ado let's get right into this. So to start off with all you're going to want to do is be in Premiere Pro and have the clip you want to use on your timeline. You'll see I've got the same clip duplicated five times that's just because I'm going to be going over five effects obviously this isn't necessary you'll just have the one that you're trying to add the effect onto. Once you've got your clip on your timeline and it's synced with the music or whatever else you want to do to it, you can then come over to the effects tab and we'll start adding the effects to the clips. Now the first one I'm going to go over is a simple scale. This just adds a really cool impact to when you get your kills and it also works really well when you layer it with the other effects in this video, which I'll show you later on in the video. I'll put a few of the effects together and you'll see what kind of effect you can create by combining multiple different effects. And yeah, let's get started with the scale. So basically you're going to want to go to your clip, make it slightly bigger on your timeline by zooming in and then scroll up to the point where you get the kill so you're going to want to go to the frame where it exactly pops up in your kill feeds you'll see if i go back one frame it's not there go forward one frame and that's when i actually get the kill so you're going to want to make sure that you're there then make sure you have the clip selected and in the top left you'll see the effect controls now there's two ways you can go about this you can have it scale and then shrink back when you get the kill or you can get the kill and then have it scale inwards so i'm going to show you both methods the first one i'll show you is when you get the kill and it scales in so you're going to want to go back one frame to the frame before you get the kill and click this stopwatch next to scale go forwards one frame you can do this by using the arrow keys i'm going to go forwards one frame to where i get the kill and i'm going to keyframe it at around 130 you'll see it's going to zoom in and you can select this graph up here and zoom in up here as well so that you get a bit of a better idea of what's going on and then basically you just want to scrub through to a point where you want it to scale back out so I'm going to say around here which you'll see is up there and I'm going to put the scale back to 100 and you'll see between the points of the scale in to 130 and going to the 100 it's just going to scale out so if we watch this back you can see just a simple scale effect if it doesn't have as enough impact for your liking, you can always go back to the frame where you keyframed it to 130 and bag it up to something like 150 and then you can see what that looks like. You can see the effect is much more dramatic. And then the second way which I mentioned to go about this is to have it pop out as you get the kill. So if you go to the frame where you get the kill and keyframe the scale at 100, go back one frame to the frame before you get the kill and keyframe it to, to however much you want it to zoom in. So for example, if I do say 140 or something like that and then go back to say before I came around the corner so something sort of like this and put it back to 100 you'll then see when I play it back it's going to zoom in and as you get the kill it's going to pop back out which has a pretty similar effect you can use whichever one you feel looks better so yeah that's it for the scales like I said this works really well if, if you layer it with the blurs and the flashes which I'm going to show you next so for the flash, you're going to want to do much of the same thing. You're going to come to the frame where you get the kill, which is going to be right there. And you're going to select your layer and come over to where it says effect. And you're going to search brightness and contrast. You can see color correction, brightness and contrast. And you're just going to drag that onto your clip. And it will add these brightness and contrast properties. So now what you're going to want to do is go back one frame, just like we did with the scale before you get the kill and keyframe the brightness at zero by clicking the stopwatch. Go forwards one frame keyframe it to something like 100 something like that that might be a little bit too much about 75 that'll do and then go forward to the point where you want the blur to stop so i'm going to say something like here and drop it back down to zero now if you watch that you'll see when we get the kill it's going to flash just like that and like i said before this works really well if you layer it with the blur and the scale like i'll show you in a minute if you want to change the duration so for example i think that flash is slightly too long i'm going to just drag the last keyframe back a little bit that'll make the effect last a bit less time you can see it's a bit more of an immediate flash i can drag it even shorter and there you go i think i actually prefer something like that and that's pretty much all it is when it comes to flashes so next up we've got the blur so you're going to do pretty much the same thing that you've done before and come to the point where where you get the kill so right here come over to effects and you're going to search gaussian blur you'll see 
blur and sharp and gaussian blur drop that onto your clip and you're going to go back one frame you'll see the gaussian blur options over here keyframe the gaussian blurs blurriness to zero go forwards one frame drag it up to a point that you're happy with so i'm going to say somewhere around the 24 mark go forwards a little bit say about here and drop it back down to zero and you'll see it'll make a keyframe there now if we watch this back it's not really that noticeable but like i said before when you mix it with flashes and scales it's going to look a lot better so i'm going to do that now Okay, so I've just combined all the effects. You can see the scale, the Gaussian blur, and the brightness and contrast, they're all up here. You literally copy exactly what I did, but instead of just dragging one effect on, you drag them all on and you'll see they're all underneath each other. And I've just lined up the keyframes so that they all start at whatever the default value is, then it scales in, blurs, and flashes, and then it goes back to default at the end. So if I play that for you, you can see that's a really cool effect, adds a lot of impact to your kill. You see as you get the kill, it suddenly flashes and blurs and then scales in. Okay, so next up is slow motion. So if you go to the point where you get the kill, which is going to be right here, select your clip and split it. So for me, I have a keybind for that. We'll come up to the razor tool here and just click on the line and then make sure you go back to the selection tool. You'll now have a split in your clip. So this is before you get the kill and then this second clip is afterwards. Now you're going to make a second cut at the point where you want the slow mode to end. So if you go to the point where, for example, you shoot the last bullet, so that could be about here and then make a second cut and then drag this clip away. So you'll see you should have the clip of before you get the kill, a little clip of the getting the kill and shooting the rest of the bullets in the mag obviously if you're using an operator or something then you just choose however long you want it to be slow mode for and then this final clip is going to be the remainder of the clip so in order to slow it down you're going to want to click it right click go to speed duration and here you'll be able to change the speed of the clip so if i make it 50 percent speed you'll see it's going to double in length if i make it 200 then it's going to be twice as fast so i want to slow mine down to half speed so if i press 50 that's going to slow it down to half speed and you can change time interpolation there's frame sample Playing, which is basically just duplicating frames that are already there frame blending where it sort of tries to put two frames together it chooses the frame before or the frame after and blends them together which can look decent sometimes however i recommend you go with optical flow that's going to try and find a midpoint between the, the two frames that it has and spit out a frame in the middle and the reason we need time interpolation is because we're slowing it down by 50 percent it's effectively playing back at 30 fps and because of playing slowing it down by 50 percent the clip i recorded is at 60 fps 50 percent of that would be 30 fps but the video is still at 60 fps technically so it's either going to show you every frame twice by using the time interpolation options it can attempt to make a frame in between so that you are technically seeing different frames even though they're not the original ones that were there if that makes sense so I'm just going to hit OK on that and you'll see the clip has now doubled in length and I can drag this back clip to join it. So if we watch this back, you'll see the sound has been altered slightly and it's become much slower. In order to fix this, there's two methods. Either before you slow it down, you can select the clip, right click, choose unlink. And then when you select the video clip and change the speed to 50 and check it on optical flow you'll see that the sound actually has not changed in length and if you then drag this across you can hear that the sound will not be affected however you do get an empty part where the sound isn't so what you could do is just duplicate that and chuck it there like this which is sort of a fix, but obviously doesn't sound amazing. The other option is you use my Valorant sound effects pack, which you'll see on screen right now. There's a link in the top right corner of the video, as well as in the description, where you can download and it has every gun sound in the game. So you'll just find the one that says Vandal Spray MP3, and you're just gonna drag it and drop it on, just like you would with any other sound file, and just position it below the slowed clip. And that way you'll then have constant gun sounds throughout the whole thing without any repeats and without it being slowed down. Of course, the final option is just to get rid of gun sounds entirely you'll see that in a few of my edits especially my most recent one i just didn't bother with the gun sounds at all because i felt that the song itself created enough of an impact that i didn't really need the gunshots as well so i didn't bother and i think it turned out pretty good but yeah other than those three options there isn't really too much you can do about the gun sound of course you could just leave it and have the slowed sound it's completely up to you the slow-mo is a pretty cool effect to have especially with rifles like this where you can have it slow as the enemy is falling or if you hit an insane flick shot and want to slow it down for example with the operator then you can do that as well there's multiple 
multiple different applications of this effect. I just showed you how to do it in this way, but you should create a freedom. I've shown you how to slow down a clip, so use it wherever you feel necessary. And onto the final effect. So for the final effect, you're gonna do much the same as you did with the other ones. Find the frame where you got the kill, which is right here. And I'm gonna use an effect called lens distortion. In After Effects, it's called optics compensation, or at least that's what I used in the After Effects video. However, they achieve effectively the same thing. So if you come up to effects and you search for lens distortion, you'll see down here, distort lens distortion, drag and drop that onto your clip. And you're gonna go back one frame before you get the kill, find the lens distortion properties, keyframe the curvature at zero, go forwards one frame till we actually get the kill and then drag the curvature to a negative number. If you drag it positive, you'll see it's gonna do this. You wanna make sure it's negative and drag it into however much you feel is appropriate. So I'm gonna go for something like something like 60 and then I'm going to go forward to the point where I want it to end so it's going to be about here and I'm going to drop it down to zero again and you'll see if I play this back it adds sort of like the scale effect but it's more of a it's more of a stretch of the screen rather than just zooming in so of course if you don't think that's that's enough you can go back to the frame where you keyframe the initial curvature bump that up to something like minus 80 for example and drag the final keyframe out a bit longer and you'll see that's what that looks like pretty much just do what you want with it if you layer it with effects like a flash and a blur as well it is pretty cool so i'll show you what that looks like so as you can see on this clip i've now applied the scale before the kill the lens distortion after the kill as well as the gaussian blur and the flash after the kill as well so if i show you what that looks like this is the sort of thing you can get by layering these effects you can see there you go if i go for it slowly and sort of explain what's happening you can see it's slowly zooming in to the point where it gets the kill gets the kill and then it blurs and flashes and comes back out using that lens distortion which is a pretty cool effect and it literally takes a minute or so just to drag and drop the different clips on there and keyframe them you can see that I've literally lined them all up, so it's not very difficult. You just line them up with the ones that you've already got on there and they'll all last the same duration. And yeah, it's a pretty cool effect. Adds a little extra something to your edits and montages. And I hope you guys make good use of it. Here it is one more time. And yeah, it's just super cool to see what you can do by just layering simple effects like blurs and flashes with other things like scales and lens distortions. Heck, you could add a slow-mo in there if you wanted to. I didn't because I didn't think it was necessary, but you could do that if you felt like it. And yeah, that's pretty much it for my top five effects. We've got the scales, the blurs, the flashes, the slow-mos, and the lens distortions. If you guys did enjoy this video or find it useful at all, please make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe, as well as check out my other social medias at RocklandVL on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And check out my other tutorials if you're interested in learning any anything else whether that's premiere pro after effects blender photoshop whatever i've got loads of tutorials on my channel all revolving around valorant and gaming montages as well as check out any of my edits or montages if you need any inspiration and other than that i'll catch you guys in the next video